In the deep blue waters of the Pacific Ocean, hugging the coasts of the Philippines, lives an ethnic group known as the Bajau. The magnificent oceans of the world carry the source of all life, water. Humanity's absolute dependence on it can be seen in the lives of tiny communities around the world who still live with the ocean. In Southeast Asia, the Bajau tribe has created a tiny community that lives entirely on water. The harsh environment and unpredictable climate have never stopped them from doing the impossible. These seafaring gypsies have forged a living in the choppy seas away from the stability and comfort of land. Over the last few decades, many of these tribes have migrated closer to land. Nevertheless, they have still held onto their culture of living on the sea, settling in coastal areas in close proximity to land. Bajaos are a nomadic seafaring tribe, constantly in search of the next ideal maritime spot to settle in. Although the history of the Bajau is unclear, many believe that they were driven out to sea by population pressures and more dominant tribes. They sought solace in the tranquility of the sea, ultimately earning the title, People of the Sea. In the central Visayas region of the Philippines is the island province of Bohol, where a Bajau village has been set up in the Bohol Sea. Hugging the shore, the village is built entirely out of wood. The platforms are anchored with wooden pylons driven into the seabed. Mario Kuham, the chief of the village, comes from a family who settled here close to 40 years ago. Owing to their maritime heritage, most Bajau men earn a living as fishermen. Jimmy Karalani is a free-diving spear-gun fisherman. Learning the skills from his legendary forefathers, Jimmy has honed them to perfection whilst coexisting with his coastal surroundings. His daily routine starts at 8 in the morning. <laughs> Not far from the village, Jimmy prepares for his free dive. He wears a primitive homespun form of fins made entirely out of wood. Although traditionally the Bajaos use wooden homemade goggles for their free diving, Jimmy uses a modern scuba diving mask as the sea is not clear closer to land. Once equipped, Jimmy grabs hold of his spear gun and focuses all his energy towards the dive. Preparing himself for the hunt, he slows his breathing and looks calmly into the waters beneath reaching an almost meditative state. These Bajau fishermen have the capacity to dive down to the depths of the sea and stay underwater for up to five minutes. 
It is for this reason Jimmy calms himself down before a dive. Focusing on his breathing and reaching a trance-like state helps to slow his heart rate and metabolism to reduce his oxygen intake. At depths of 20 meters, water pressure is up to three times of that on the surface, compressing lungs that are already lacking oxygen. These habitual free divers have mastered the ability to withstand the pressures of staying deep underwater for long periods of time. Jimmy free dives all the way down to the seabed and proceeds to utilize a unique skill of the badger. He walks. Shirking off the pressure and the urge to gasp for air, Jimmy remains focused on the hunt. Once he locates a fish, he wastes no time in raising his spear gun and taking aim. With an absolute mastery of his weapon, he pulls the trigger and bags his first fish of the day. Jimmy repeats this process several times a day, a strenuous effort that takes a toll on his body. To prevent himself from exerting any unnecessary energy, Jimmy will swim against the current when he is underwater. This will ensure that when he surfaces, the natural flow of the current will carry him towards the boat without him having to swim towards it. The simplicity of their daily routine masks the miracles that these men perform. The physicality and technical expertise required to do what they do can only be explained by the fact that these are people living in pure harmony with the rhythms of the sea. Jimmy's hunting will sometimes lead him to find taklubo, various types of shellfish that can be sold for extra income. Alas dio sa mule na, sinilo niya ang naiyay, na sinamu na siya ko. Sibil, mapinakakanta ilo eh, napabalihin. Pagka kaninia na sinisi, niya na siya tinatan na iya. Although free diving brings with it serious health risks like blackouts underwater, many of the Bajau have naturally evolved to master the various risks involved. Tinoon ako ay panditaling ako. Pag na ako tinoon ay mako ka na nakaan ko ay. Pag umu siya ka, tinoon ay tinoon ay ako. Pag di ata ako di bangka ay panditaling ako. Pag panditaling ako ay pinote, nahaling, nahalam na pahali na. May pa yung minote. The extraordinary skills of the Bajau fishermen are passed down from father to son paving the way for the next generation to take care of the family. Ahmad and Robin Nadley are a father-son fishing team. Under the tutelage of his father, Robin has mastered the waters, learning breath control and fishing techniques. At only 15 years of age, Robin is now considered an expert spear gun fisherman. <laughs>
Ta sprint na he na wat ya. Ma sim mai wat tinaan pul manai. Ah wat tinaan, wat tinaan. Na iya ya mea mea wat aku sali. Bajau fishermen tend to fish in pairs to minimize risk. Ahmad and Robin look out for one another in case they spot sharks in the open water or if one of them succumbs to fatigue underwater. Ako ay may kami manilaw tinaan. Tibagano ay kami akan na kalitan. Yan mahiyan. Alam na kami makatuntul patuhon. Kaya katawan kami mariom yun niya ito. Apaya ay mamanga na ay. Makan kami makapuli na ay. Naruha ko yan makatabang ay. Baya ko marikiriki yan na paina ko yan tinabangan ni iya ay. At tibagano ay. Bang kami buat amana, biar kami keruangan nak anakku, nak buat bang kami binaan ni Tuhan, nak buat ya hai pemohon kami saka lima kilo, tiga kilo, buat pabelian kami ni aku rasa ka, buat tabeli saka enam ratus, mag pitu ratus, nak buat ahap na pelasan kami kami akan beli nabuas, kakakan nak kami. Big Spud Jal fishermen spend practically the whole day toiling out in the ocean looking for enough fish to sustain their family. With the sun setting, Jimmy and his son Idy return home after a hard day's work in the vast seas. Jimmy hands over his day's catch to his wife, who fulfills the traditional role of the Bajo women, that of a homemaker. She prepares a simple meal consisting of fish, a staple food for the family. In addition to the fish, Jimmy managed to bring home a shellfish today. It is eaten raw with vinegar or salt added for taste. But the shell is kept aside for Jimmy to sell. Nabangan niya anak kima eh. Di nga anak kina itan na bari buat eh. Kati kina itan bari ni ruwanan di bangka. Patuhun na isam. Pagkan na eh. Bangan niya lang ayah he pinana eh. Bangan niya talwa pa na he pinana na isam tinuhong. Akati siya bangan niya lang. Ihalaman 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 niya lang. The Bajaos have learned to coexist with the water by adapting to the impulses of the ocean, but they have also used their expertise to assemble an indispensable tool of their trade, the spear gun. Throughout history, humankind has harnessed the endless energy and resources of the Earth's oceans to build their communities. These communities have turned to innovation and ingenuity to build tools to help them cope with the erratic moods of the sea. The Bajau tribe in the Philippines have always been using spears to hunt for fish, but these masters of the sea have fashioned a much more modern weapon from their tradition. The Bajau use the Pana, a spear gun. It is a quintessential tool passed down through the generations and the primary way any Bajau will hunt for fish. Jimmy, as an experienced fisherman, crafts a Pana for one of his protégés. Wata wong hinang pana itu mencari kiri kiku gitu no anak aku esa matu aku dan anakku ya itu terabahun bagi hinang pana agtegal pana agluang basi. The pana is made primarily from timber and other easily found materials like copper pipes. Firstly, Jimmy utilizes a machete to painstakingly craft and shape the body of the spear gun. Using only a hammer and a screwdriver, he then carefully fashions a tiny hole in the rod 
which will eventually be used as the spear. To sharpen the tip of the rod, Jimmy hammers down on it repeatedly and cuts out an angled section of it. He then uses the same cut-out section, inserting it into the hole to use as a makeshift hook. Na bang tawon na marilaw ti ang tilod na basi, pagkati sa tilod basi ang hapana, patuhon na, pagtuhon ni, agad na na rin ang piha, mga niya rin ang tapiha, na pinana na. Tapos, mga niya rin tinuhog ni nylon, bagi pariyata, mga may pali, patuhon na isang amihan na isang mareo. Eh, ang limutan, mga niya ang talimod na yung alahi, pinana na iya, katis pinana eh, mga niya na rin ang taluwa, tinuhog na isang baka nylon. At ibang ka eh, napalabu. Mabagi ni ibang ka, akat is ba nila anong pa na itinuhog. Once the rubber is stretched back and fastened to the tip of the nozzle, the partner is ready. Jimmy needs to test it and iron out any kinks before he can use it underwater as an effective homemade hunting weapon. The extraordinary velocity generated by the spear gun speaks volumes about the Bajau's traditional lifestyle. Even with the use of everyday materials like rubber, these hunters have crafted a hunting weapon that is simple yet highly effective. Kaya malakwa ta, huwag tahay po ko tilo. Aglamba, napanay ito akadis niyan patuhon na. The Bajau are sea gypsies, and boats are a necessity in their lives. Although many Bajau have settled closer to land, the importance of their boats has not diminished. With fishing being the principal industry of these people, the craft of boat making has become just as vital. 55-year-old Feliciano Canani is a boat maker who, when not making new boats, can be found refurbishing old ones. Feliciano has been doing this for 40 years, working his way up from apprentice to now imparting his knowledge to the younger generation. The boat makers in the Bajau community are pillars of the society. The Bajau's daily coexistence with the water surrounding them leans heavily on their use of boats. Without craftsmen like Feliciano refurbishing old boats and making new ones, the community would invariably come to a standstill. It's tough work for Feliciano, but he carries it out with immense pride. <laughs> The boatmakers of the Bajau are a cornerstone of this seafaring tribe, 
with their tremendous contributions to their people's lifestyle. Although the Bajau have slowly transitioned away from their roots as nomads, living purely on water, they have still held on to their traditional culture. With night falling on Tutulan Dawis, Bohol's Bajau village, the sound of music fills the air. Celebrations are in order for a three-day wedding ceremony. For the first two days, the Bajau women perform a traditional folk dance at the village's hall. Lorna Kuham is one of the many women who participate in the festivities and perform this folk dance. Yung preparation namin, bago kami pumunta sa wedding dance namin, ay mag-makeup kami muna, tapos mag earrings, mag quintas at mag bracelet. Tapos sitingin kami sa salamin kung nakaayos na kami. The communal dance is called Angiga, with only the women participating. They form their own groups and take turns to perform the traditional dance. Ano-ano na namin nung nakatatandahan until now, alam na namin yung mga sayo kasi bali ito ang tradisyon namin pag may kakasal, yun, magtitribute ka doon, sasayaw ka, mga babae at mga, mga bata laman pwede, ang mga lalaki pwede sumasayaw pag, pag siya ang ikakasal, pero pag hindi, ang mga lalaki ay upo lang titingin, pero yung mga babaeng matanda, maliit, dalaga, yun ang pwede sumasayaw doon sa wedding ceremony namin. Angigal is a tribute to the Bajau's way of life, filled with movements that are inspired by the life at sea. Ang sayaw namin ay tinatawag na magigal, tapos yung kamay namin ay parang dagat nga umalong at yung bewang namin ay parang nga isda nga sumasayaw. The Bajau's art and culture imitates their life. It is so deeply imbued with their seagoing lifestyle that one can't help but think that the sea is just the natural extension of their lives. The sea is more than just a resource for the Bajau, comforting and nurturing them in equal measure. From the importance of their fishing to their boat making, and the way these remarkable men and women have naturally coexisted with these vast bodies of water, the Bajau have earned the right to call the sea their home. They are truly the masters of the sea. Ang kan ang kan ako mal makausa mare ay ipausa ko i marilaw apaka may natural sama. Ya hero pausa ko i misana ni asadde. Ala mare ana sadde pausa ko i na marilaw tito. With the world's population striving to find more and more land to live on, the ancient tribes of the Uros and the Bajau are a reminder of a simpler time. A time where people had a much more intimate relationship with their environment, living with the water and not just exploiting it. These communities need to be celebrated and respected for their ability to coexist with some of the toughest landscapes of our grand earth.